Trading in the Zone is a book that had a big impact on a lot of traders. And we had Michael Thoma, one of the trader and coach at his art trade, do a call on especially the lessons you learned from trading in the zone and things you can apply to your own trading. Now that call is, I believe, powerful because we kind of break down a lot of the stuff you hear in the book that you might have forgotten about if you read the book before or things that you might just kind of plain and simple not understood the first time around when you read the book. So whether you've read Trading in the Zone or not, this is going to be a good call recording to watch to just use things in the book to your own advantage in trading. So without further ado, we'll dive right in and I'll come back at the end for a quick conclusion. In this sort of context, I've used Mark Douglas's thinking, but I've also applied sort of a little twist in the words to be more realistic and practical. Uh, and we'll talk about these. Okay. So first, before we even start, you know, do you ever have that feeling? If you've traded long enough, you've had it where you've had these bad runs where you're just nothing can go right. It's just so frustrating. Even when you're trading properly, just things aren't working out. And then you get some times where you make mistakes and you're winning trades. Your normal trades, they're winning. And even ones where you like maybe take a little chance and it's within your trading plan, but it's, you know, I'm just going to go for it. it. It works out. Like it's just, it's that little time. It doesn't happen that often, but where it's just that everything seems to be working and you're, you're feeling the markets and, and you're kind of pumped up about, you know, where you want to go. Well, it's kind of what trading in the zone is. Let's look what the bullets say here, and then we'll, we'll take it to the next step. Trading in the zone is performance. Stop right there. First word, performance. Right? Remember, we're here to execute the plan. Performance, both actual and mindset. Right? Actual is putting trades on. But the mindset, you are in a proper mindset, ready to do this job, where you are in harmony, and we'll talk about that, in harmony with the markets and your trading plan simultaneously. That's a interesting, a lot of words there, okay? But you're performing, you're doing it properly, you're in the proper mindset framework where everything seems to be flowing. And we'll talk and give examples of what, what that's all about. Trading in the zone, this is Mark Douglas's words, you know what you have to do, and you do it. Does that raise a red flag for anyone listening You know, here on the recording? You know what you have to do, and you do it. There's little evaluation, and I say little because you have to evaluate, you have to identify trades, and then you just execute. So you identify, assess, execute. All right, where have we heard those words before? Next bullet. You respect market movement. I put comma trends. Mark Douglas is a big trend philosopher. All right. You respect market movement. Respect's an interesting word. So I'm supposed to respect the markets? The answer is yes. Okay. And we'll talk about why you have to respect the markets in the next bullet. Accept the fact that anything can happen given the changing market participants and sentiment each second. Okay. Now I feel through a couple of words of my own in there, but one of the things as traders, when we're quote trading in the zone is we open, we, we open that computer up and we, you know, we log in our platform immediately. You have to ask myself, anything can happen. A news event, something else, markets just change on a dime. Okay. Some I have control over, but most of it, I have very little control over. The first word in that bullet is accept. I accept that. This is an arena in which we trade in where most of the participants are changing. Right? Goldman Sachs is buying, buying yen. All of a sudden, they get an order somewhere to sell the yen. And guess what? They put the order in. The markets have changed. We don't know about it. But we accept the fact that this events uncontrollable will occur. This is what the job description that we've agreed to when it became, we became traders, okay? And we'll talk about randomness. That's really what this is all about. All right, Alex, next one, if you can. Okay, so let's get to basics and we'll start to throw in some practicality of how we get there. And again, if you've traded long enough, you've probably may not have called it trading in the zone, but you got this like streak where it's just like nice, you got a nice flow going. 
So this is these are Mark Douglas's theory things. Ninety per five percent of the errors that we do make as traders come from being wrong, losing money, fear of missing out, or leaving money on the table. Ninety five percent of the errors. So when we go against our trading plan, come from being wrong. Maybe we make another trade because we're frustrated that the market took our money. We're more prone to be wrong after we have lost money. We are also break our trading plans when we get nervous and anxious that we've missed a move and we start chasing it. And errors come from leaving money on the table. Now, leaving money on the table isn't the error. The error comes after you felt you left money on the table. Okay, so leaving money on the table, you hit your target and you're fine. It's when it keeps on going, then you start getting all ticked off. And that's where you're prone for errors. In fact, what's interesting, I'm going off script here, is Mark Douglas is spot on, even from an auditor standpoint. Because when I see, look at trade journals of target one, target two, I take a random sample and I look and see what did the price do after that? And you know how did they did they have an error after that trade? Because sometimes on a really good trade, perfectly compliant and winning, you know there's a, the they're vulnerable for errors when you get ticked off because you're leaving money on the table. I say this as an instructor, and I say this as a personal uh, trader who has made that mistake many a time. Edge, we've talked about having you know in previous having a strategy with theoretical edge is nothing more than an indication of higher probability of one thing happening over another. Let's hold off on the last part, all right? And I'm, I'm repeating these a few times because I really want to make sure I drill this, this information. Edge, and we talked about how to edge strategy. And, oh, yeah, I got a winning strategy. Really, it's nothing more than an indication. You have a historical basis that has a higher probability of one thing happening over the other thing happening. And then I put over a series of randomly distributed events. All right. There has to be occurrences for this probability to happen. Okay. You can't just take one winning trade and say, I got a great strategy. There's a lot to digest here. They look simple, it's just a few bullets, but it's a lot here. Let's be practical. Okay. This is a good thing I want to take away out. I, I added here. This game that we call trading is just a numbers game. It has nothing to do with financial markets. It just happen, happens to be the arena that we play in. We can be trading squirrels crossing the street. Don't think of them as financial markets, right? They're just charts, whether it's squirrels, financial markets. You know, one of the things I, I told... Uh, Someone uh, a few months ago, we were talking about sports betting and, and they love it and they enjoy it. And he says, you know, Mike, it's really, it's really just like trading. You should do this too. And I says, if the edge was there, I had a higher probability of one thing happening over another, over a series of random events and the liquidity, the game was able to be played. I would probably do that. I would probably give up trading and do that because it's just more fun, All right? But that's not the case. What we look at is just charts, and it is the financial markets. But think of it like trading squirrels crossing the street, and you're saying the squirrel on the right gets there quicker 65% of the time. De debug yourself from the financial markets. Okay, Here's another really realistic trading in the zone basics. You let the trades come to you versus fishing to find trades. Now, I know we have some people here and we have hopefully a lot going to watch the, the video, the, you know, the recording. But the hair on the back of your neck should be standing up for some of you when you see this bullet, including mine, by the way. Okay? How many times have we done that? When you trade in the zone, it's just all coming to you. It's like a candy. Candy's just being spit out of your computer saying, look at the setup, look at that one. And if you ever notice, if you're kind of like trying to find trades, and I see in the Slack group, you know, markets are you know, not moving. It's so hard to find trades. 
the fact that you even say you're fine trying to find trades goes against the principles of trading in the zone. Practically, there's a little tip. If you set alerts for things that you're looking for, let the alerts trigger off, right? That's really an electronic way of letting trades come to you. Deep breath. Okay, we got one more slide, Alex. Uh, we'll get to it. And then I want to hear your comments, experiences, and even maybe you question some of this. I'm not going to have a mastermind call without specific tips on how to get to the zone. Let's look at them. Number one, take advantage of these occurrences that just happen to come every once in a while. Hopefully more frequently, if you do the right things as a trader, you have good discipline, et cetera. You know, some of the best traders, their equity curves, even like in the best hedge funds, call them flat with pops, right? There's just that curve where it's just, it's flat and then pop. Then it goes flat again, pop. It's basically what they're doing is they're hanging in there. And then once all these little things come together, discipline, strategy, the markets accommodate, all right? And then maybe throw in a little luck. That's when they get their pop. And then they just chill out until it happens again, right? Just waiting for those little streaks to occur. It takes a lot of disciplines, very uh, patience as well. Second takeaway. And again, I, I, want, I always like when people kind of, hmm, that's me, right? Avoid the desire to be right. This game that we play, the two squirrels crossing the street, has nothing to do with being right. Strategy that has an edge we talked about. And we're just going to let that edge play out through all the randomness that the market provides that we can't control. We're just, and I say this, you know, probably every mastermind call, we're just executing a plan. Doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. The desire to be right could be very painful and financially costly. Avoid that desire. Right? And think about if you're working for a boss or a hedge fund or a prop firm, and the risk manager says, what do you want me to do? Just execute the plan. Don't worry about the results. Okay, that's my job. Crave the desire to add occurrences so the edge plays out. This is a big thing that I always look to when I talk about you know, it in Slack groups and in, in the journals. There's a winning strategy. It looks like there's an edge, but I'm not comfortable because there's not enough occurrences. All right? We need to play enough games with the squirrels cross, running across the street to say we have a valid edge and we can do it so it plays out, right? So while I want everyone to be picky, this job requires occurrences. Occurrences is a nice way of saying trades. We need to have enough samples during a certain period so we can let this play out because the randomness just continuously plays a role and randomness could help us in five trades and could hurt us in five trades regardless of how well we execute it. We need sample. So number three, there's no need to win every trade. That I think I've repeated several times you know, in this, this session. Or trade bigger size. Again, hair on the neck should be standing up for some. Just for the probabilities to play out. That's what our job is. To take a series of events, if we have a winning historically winning edge, the probabilities should play out. Not going to play out all the time because the whole randomness of the markets are going to have a factor in it. But if we execute our plan properly, again, little mistakes, execute with precision, good compliance, the probabilities should play out. And if they don't, then we can look at our strategy. You know, we have to readjust that. But there's no way you need to win every trade, right? That's basically way saying avoid the desire to be right or trade bigger size. And what I'm saying is size is the number one killer of traders. Trade as small as possible. Say, well, Mike, you know, eventually I want to make this my career. How do I do that? I can get funded by a firm. I can get you know, outside capital. It's great. And I agree. You're not going to be trading for, you know, three to $5 uh, a week. So how do we do it? 
while maintaining the principles of trading in the zone. It's that fourth bullet. The graduation plan, this is what I love about the graduation plan and I harp on it so much, is it factors in all these things, right? The graduation plan allows you to track your results over a series, series, remember, meaning several occurrences of trades, right? So rather than evaluate yourself on each trade or how you did that day or how you did that week, you take a series, for example, 25 equals the one result. So if you're looking at each trade with a microscope, right? And I, I see on Slack, it's, you know, having a great week and, or whatever, and you could tell just by the tone. And then the next week, oh, uh, you know, really struggling. You know, could we have a one-on-one? -on -one? Why? Because you had a winning, a losing day. Graduation plan allows you to take a series of trades, 25. So it allows all the normalizations, all the randomness to take place. And hopefully with the edge of probability, you have one result. After that series, then we evaluate, just like we would evaluate on a particular trade or a particular week or a particular day, all right? Let that randomness play out. And then you evaluate only after the series is completed. So what am I saying there, all right? Is don't, really in theory, I'm saying don't look at your trade journal until you do the series. Now you can look at compliance and stuff, but don't evaluate it. Look at the whole series once it's done. Then you could do your evaluation, all right? So you have the series acting as if it's one trade and then hopefully everything normalizes and then you can graduate to higher size after each series or a series of series, uh, if you trade, you know, more frequently as you graduate. Now that is a lot. It's only three slides and it's only like three or four bullets each slide. Um, you know, we haven't even gotten to a lot of the concepts of Mark Douglas's kind of theories and thinkings behind that. He has a lot of catchphrases if you if you ever read his book. Uh, really cool takeaways. It's really a reference manual. I mean, mine is all written up and dented. It's great. I've read it. I've referred to it hundreds of times and read it at least eight. But rather than just talk about a book's theory, I want to make sure and I want to hear your experiences and thoughts about some of these situations that, you know, that you went, hmm, and uh, how you got out of them, or if you're stuck in them now, how we can help get you through them. But these are some little things, and it's always challenging to take psychological concepts and put them into practical things that you can do. Um, I felt I've nailed some of these here, not all of them, of course. And each person has a lot of different you know, areas they wanna focus on. But if you look at some of these and ask yourself, I'm not really doing that. Maybe I should do that. You know, And some of these are psychological challenges like avoiding the desire to be right. That's, that's, that's tough. You're not gonna cure that in a mastermind. But here's ways to do it. Desire to be right? Let me just do 25 or 50 trades and then I'll evaluate. It's much more smoothing effect to it where that horrible trade that you screwed up on or the one that went totally crazy and you did everything right and you got stopped out like four times in a row. All of a sudden after 25 trades, I don't even remember those. This is the concept of, and some of the tactics where you get sort of into this zone of rep repetition, repetition, robotic like a monkey, right? Just a monkey like eating bananas. That's trading in the zone. It's almost like a thinkless execution, repetitive motion type task. And that's how we get paid as traders. So if you had some value from this call, there was a big one, like I said, a lot of things you can learn from this. Hope that was useful for you. Let me know what your main takeaway was from that call. Would love to hear that in the comment section below. And check out the program here, the Academy. If you want to get coached by traders, learn more from us and be able to get surrounded by good traders who are treating this like a real business. But that being said, I post videos like this three times a week. So one interview every Sunday, two videos in a week where I teach you stuff about trading and get these calls recording sometimes, which are paid training where you get them for free on YouTube from time to time. Not all of them, but a few of them so far. And we'd love to have you follow us in this journey. So make sure you click the subscribe button below and I'll catch you back here in the next video pretty soon. Ciao.